Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to this uh, new webinar. Just after the summer holidays or the summertime, in uh, at least in uh, in Europe and the Northern Hemisphere, uh, towards the end of summer. Here with me today is uh, Clarissa Puccioni, who is uh, uh, managing the uh, butterflies project, a conservation project, uh, which is the focus of today's. Uh, presentation and webinar. Uh, I will just uh, start by sharing uh, my screen and provide you with a few technical information and then uh, I'll pass the microphone to Clarissa. Again, uh, thanks a lot for your uh, interest and for participating to this uh, uh, webinar. Recording of the whole webinar and the PowerPoints will be sent via email uh, link and uh, it will be available on our website under the events area from the top menu on both uh, Friend of the Earth and Friend of the Sea websites. So today's webinar is about the status of butterflies and moths in the world and uh, the butterfly safe uh, certified agriculture as part of the Friend of the Earth uh, certification. And uh, a global butterfly census program which has been launched uh, at the beginning of this year by Friend of the Earth and the WSO uh, at the global level. Uh, right now with us is uh, Clarissa. As I mentioned, she, is, uh, uh, she will introduce herself also more in detail uh, after a few slides that I will show. And uh, she's the butterfly project manager at uh, Friend of the Earth. Uh, we are also expecting uh, to turn up uh, uh, our special guest today, Mr. Uh, Javier uh, Saki. Uh, team, uh, please uh, double check that uh, Javier is uh, managing to connect. And uh, he's managing director of a very, very, very interesting uh, company in uh, Belize, uh, Ya Axkin, he will tell us the right pronunciation, I apologize, uh, Butterfly Farm, which is also very much involved into conservation and good practices in farming butterflies. So here you see all our contact uh, details. And uh, um, please uh, be aware that the next webinar will be on the 29th of September at 2 p.m. Sri Lanka time, and it's related to the oceans this time. We try to alternate between the, our two projects and uh, it's a uh, friend of the sea, your gateway to the EU market uh, through sustainable fisheries. It's uh, mainly targeted to Sri Lanka and Maldives, but uh, uh, operators, but uh, it's also, of course, uh, uh, very much open also to other companies, which uh, uh, might be interested in an update about Friend of the Sea and uh, the Friend of the Sea certification. And um, it will be carried out uh, in collaboration with uh, SGS uh, Sri Lanka, who is uh, supporting us for the audits uh, in, the, in that area, in that country and in, in that uh, regional area. So just uh, two slides about us. Uh, I'm the founder and director of WSO, the World Sustainability Organization, uh, which uh, has uh, based on the Dolphin Safe Tuna Project experience and good uh, conservation results obtained by that project, uh, uh, launched uh, two um, uh, programs for certification of uh, sustainable products and services, Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth. Uh, over 1,000 companies from more than 100 countries worldwide have uh, these uh, uh, certifications on their pro products. And uh, a few words about Friend of the Earth, uh, which is uh, the focus also of today's uh, webinar. And uh, uh, Friend of the Earth uh, has uh, two souls. One is related to conservation projects, uh, which I will just rapidly talk about in the next slides of which uh, uh, the butterfly uh, global butterfly census is part but uh, it has also um, it is also a certification a, an international multi-product certification of products from sustainable agriculture and farming 
Uh, in fact, there's uh, nowadays almost uh, 100 companies uh, in, from almost all continents which have uh, friend of the earth certified uh, products. Uh, I won't go into much detail about this, but if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, and as you can see, there are def different products already certified, uh, starting from quinoa to coffee in Costa Rica, for example, to parmesan, uh, rice, oil, wine, tomato, fruit, and uh, nutri uh, nutraceutical products. And as I mentioned, both Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth uh, uh, represent a, a, a long list of uh, various uh, conservation projects which are actually listed and detailed on our website and here you see just uh, a few of them mentioned on our annual report this said i will uh, pass the microphone uh, over to um, clarissa let me just uh, get back stop the sharing of my screen so hi to everyone i am an italian an italian naturalist and I'm very passionate on butterflies and I want to share with you some uh, general information about con conservation butterfly and also about our project. So let's start talking about the general characteristics and also differences between butterfly and moths. So moths are general nocturnal but we know that nature is made of exceptions so there are certain moths that are diurnal, but generally, generally are nocturnal. They have a camouflage and darker colors. When they rest, they have horizontal position wings. They have also feathered or um, pointed antenna and a stocky and hairy body. Instead, butterfly, on the other hand, uh, they are commonly diurnal with bright and vivid colors. Uh, when they rest, they have upright so in the vertical position wings and they have um, filiform and long antenna with thin body to make you an idea i can show you two photos about our global butterfly census the first one is caligo uh, a species of genus of caligo if you can see the upright position of the wings uh, long and filiform antenna, and the second one is a species of Saturnit, a Pseudo-Automeris Antiochia from Colombia, and we can see the camouflage color of wings, uh, uh, with the exception of the under wings of the color of pink, but they have, um, it has a um, hairy and stocky body. So regarding their distribution, they have colonized, monopolized all continents except Antarctica because it's too cold. And they have, uh, in the um, Lepidoptera study, uh, they are concentrating in seven ecozones. Um, to make you another idea with our special photos from our project, the first one, Radeoptichia Clio, is from Ecuador, so it's a neotropical species because it comes from South America. The second one is the green veined white, a common pierid uh, who is uh, situated in uh, Europe and Eastern of Asia, so it's a Palearctic species. And the third one is uh, comes from Canada, so North America, and uh, I can say that it's a Nearctic species. Especially um, if you look at our website, you can see in the description, I usually uh, put Nearctic, Palearctic or Neotropical because it's important. Larissa, thank yes? you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I forgot, uh, but I think this is the right moment uh, to launch uh, one of the two polls that we have today. Yes, uh, of course. To launch it, it's very fast. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's actually about uh, this uh, introduction to butterflies globally and uh, and uh, the question is uh, how many recognized butterfly species are there in the world an approximate figure so mm -hmm. you can uh, have different choices two millions two hundred thousand we are not talking about uh, moths here only butterflies two hundred and two hundred thousand 
3,000, 20,000, 5,000, and so on. So feel free to answer, and uh, it will be open until the end of the uh, presentation. So thank you very much, Clarissa, and sorry to interrupt you, but no I don't do that. Thanks. Please feel free to proceed. Okay. So I can continue to speak about ecology, the, which is the study of the interactions between living beings and their habitat. So um, butterflies and moths are considered by experts important pollinating insects. And in particular, their process is called psychophily in entomology. So uh, in this case, we can see the white angled sulfur uh, pollinating autochthon flower, I can image, and uh, so going flower to flower, the process allows the generation of new, um, the birth, sorry, of new uh, flowery generations. They are rich also the food chain with big and small animals like monkeys, uh, reptiles like lizards, and also arthropods like spiders. And um, so they can take the number of butterflies and moths low. And uh, in recent studies, they are considered useful, important, fundamental bioindicators to, um, to indicate the uh, environmental health and also the climate change. So, for example, if in a you can do a bio blitz in a habitat, you can see a species. After two years, you can you go in the same habitat, probably the same species, there isn't anymore. So probably there is a problem with the environment, with the temperature, in particular with the climate change. So it's important, uh, they are important bioindicators, so they indicate the health of a specific environment. But how many are they? And which is their status in the world? I think, uh, director, here there is another important uh, push we can, we can give about the number, because among a million known of insects, probably this team is 10 million, a lot, 20,000 of butterflies and 150,000 of our, our moths in the world. But uh, as you can see from the emoticon I put, it is sad. Unfortunately, experts um, fear that this number will decrease because have recent studies shown that 53% of butterflies in the world are in danger or are decreasing. And uh, also there are some examples of the greater decline in Europe has the common swallowtail or the common red admiral. They uh, saw the decline about 17 or 29%. It's very, very huge. Not to mention the famous North American monarch who um, He's uh, seen the 19% of the decline. So why? <laughs> there are uh, many threats. The particular threat is deforestation. So um, deforestation reduces the gene pool of species and also reduces the habitat with the possibility to butterflies and moths to, of, of hiding from predators and they have a particular te uh, adaptation technique called fading of the wings. Uh, at the other hand, for the deforestation, the wings faded because um, with less vivid colors, predators cannot see butterflies very well. So they can hide from predators in this way. Uh, this is a very recent discovery. And about the threats, uh, there are other types, like, for example, urbanization, intensive grazing, intensive use of pesticides in agriculture, and also uh, invasive species, why not, that uh, not only destroy the demographic balance, but also the symbiosis with nourishing plants. And that's very important. And in a small per percentage, also the black market of exotic butterflies. Climate 
impact. So yes, the climate change is perhaps the biggest threat to these important insects because uh, the effects are very devastating. A recent study discovered uh, sees butterflies and moths who not migrate but move towards um, countries in Northern Europe to find a milder temperature. So this is due to the um, overheating of the climate. And one of consequence of this that butterflies move, they are prides, and also birds that are their predators, they move also where it's more cold. But what cannot move are plants. So the host plants cannot move, they stay in, a, in the same place. So there is um, a question <laughs> that the butterfly um, which plants they can hit. And experts discovered that they are changing the diet due to this problematic. And they also change the colors of wings, uh, always uh, the same um, of deforestation, because to, this is to avoid the overheating of the climate change. In an epoch like this, called Anthropocene, which, uh, in which resources, living beings and ecosystems are exploited only for profit, finding solutions to this damage can be vital for butterflies and moths. So, the first one is a scientific research that is effective thanks to recognition studies in field and also the use of the well-known, well known for me probably, but it's a well-known polar transept. A transept allows to have a quantitative and a qualitative study uh, count in five square meters. So along the 500 meters, you can count right and left how many and which types of species of butterflies there are. Another conservation initiatives are uh, the construction of native butterfly houses. One example is Farfalia. We uh, created with Polixiana Association for the protection of endangered species in the southern of Italy. And uh, also the installation, installation of botanical gardens and the urban gardening, which become um, increasingly popular in towns and cities, help the pollination process, uh, fundamental for the birth of new generation larval host plants. And the other hand, the biological corridors allows to recognize spots of fragmented habitat, do to deforestation, for example, and uh, um, an efficient corridor in northern Italy, in Val di Susa, um, for the rare Cassandra butterfly, Polixena Cassandra, was created for the first time. So experts create these corridors with uh, its host plant called Aristolochia, because the Cassandra butterfly depends only on Aristolochia plants. And so the project is going on very well, I can see. Uh, another possible solution, especially in agriculture, to avoid the death of butterflies and moths, uh, is to use natural pesticides that used carefully alone or in a mix can remove also polyphagous larvae, but not killing them. This is important because in this way they cannot uh, reach the end of the stage. We can also plant uh, flowers and plants at the edge of the crops to attract insects, in particular insects, uh, um, useful insects who can eat the harmful ones. For example, ladybug can uh, eat aphids and certain species of wasp, other kind of harmful insects. In this way, we can see a Melanarja galatea flying in tranquility in a wild garden in a urban area. Okay, we are talking about butterfly safe certification, but before talking about the friend of the earth certification, I'm going, uh, I'm going to, to, to do an, intro, an introduction because the use, why 
we must do certifications because the use of pesticides and genetic modification is one of the major cause of the death of these beneficial insects. In the major, we can see, for example, a Danaus plexippus, Danaus eripus, so a um, North American butterfly, a monarch, sorry, that says, oh no, milkweed for my eggs. Milkweed is uh, the host plants of the genus Asclepio, and in this case, the herbicides kills the, the host plant. But if the host plant is present and there is the caterpillar, the insecticide kills the caterpillar. So this doesn't allow to uh, the caterpillar arrive at the next generation. And this is an enormous problem because a recent study, a uh, European study, said uh, through the European Grassland Butterfly Index that the 39% of grassland butterfly um, have declined from the 90s until now uh, due to pesticide and intensive agriculture, due to intensive grazing, so not controlled grazing in particular. And we're talking about common cabbage white or colorful lice night like this one. This one in the, in the draw is uh, the Antocharis cardamines uh, or orange tip. And the orange tip is um, insert in the, the seven, 17 butterflies uh, and eight moths of Europe depend on good agriculture. So the, I can make an example. Uh, the presence of Lichena dispar Lichena dispar is uh, a species uh, um, classified critically endangered, so it is present in the red list of Italian butterflies, and uh, she depends only to rotationally mowing. So here there is the man with the rotational mowing uh, throughout the year. We can see with this kind of mowing, um, the Lichena can have a lot of plants and a lot of flowering plants. And in the second one, the intensive mowing doesn't allow the replacement of wild plants, and so flowers cannot attract the, this lysonite. This is why Lichena dispar is in danger, caused to a bad mowing. <laughs> That's that. But there are some uh, solutions. Uh, so a good management of agriculture which can be uh, compatible with the biodiversity of Ropalocera, so butterflies, and Heterocera, so moths, consists in transforming the intensive into extensive agriculture with, for example, with the control of the grazing, with the control of the fertilizers, and also in er eradicating um, invasive plants and inputting flowering edges ponds and terraces, uh, this one, that maintains the characteristics of the habitat, don't destroy it. And also vineyards, olive groves, orchards are also important breeding sites for woody moths. And I want to uh, speak also about uh, one bio blitz, I think I can I can say that the bio blitz uh, uh, I did with the University of Florence because I studied uh, natural science in Pisa in Florence. And uh, during this bio blitz, which is uh, an ecological method in order to monitor environmental health and the quality of biodiversity. So in the first image, the green one, we can see the transept, the transept I did with uh, the polar the transept, if you remember. And in the second one, I did a map, a GIS map, where I differentiated the different uh, vegetational areas in which I did the transept. So the results show that butterflies and moths prefer rotating mold fields rich in flowering wild plants. So this is another proof, like one of the China parts, that common butterflies field grass butterflies need a controlled mowing, extensive mowing, we can, we can say. And we arrive 
to the um, Friend of the Earth certification because Friend of the Earth is part of the World Sustainability Organization that promotes products from sustainable agriculture, thus protective butterflies habitat. And uh, Friend of the Earth launched the Global Butterfly Census uh, to promote their conservation. So this is, our, uh, this is a citizen science project and uh, um, the criteria to obtain the certification are in line uh, what the FAO provides and concerned the good management of processes and territories used for the conservation of the biodiversity, the reduction of pesticides and water waste, the control of CO2 emissions, and such as the implementation of renewable energy. So we arrived talking about uh, the Friend of the Earth Global Butterfly Census. So I am the manager of this uh, uh, important and beautiful project. And um, this is a citizen science project, as I already said, because it's based on the collection of photos. So um, there are different methods uh, to count butterflies, but another one is the citizen science. So uh, thanks to citizens throughout the world, I can uh, receive photos. I'm going to identify them and I'm going to put it in our system on the website, you can visit. And if you want to send uh, butterfly photos, it's necessary uh, only to send uh, your photo to this uh, WhatsApp number. So plus 39, because it's an Italian project, 351-252520. And in but it works from uh, any country worldwide. In fact, we have uh, pictures mm -hmm. for more than, uh, I think, 15 countries and so on. And it's completely free of charge. So just send a WhatsApp like you would do with any friend uh, abroad or so. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And in this case, so the species collective, because I'm going to identify with the species name, the country, and uh, this can give a quantitative and a qualitative indication in the given country and in a given season. And the next step is to uh, make a first uh, our first statistical study about that and I'm going to do different list of rare species endangered species or common ones so so yes until now we received uh, 900 and more photos of butterflies since January 2021 and uh, I counted uh, more or less 122 species of moths and 322 species of butterflies from 14 different countries in the world. And uh, um, there is a 15 country I'm going to say to you right now because I did the PowerPoint before uh, knowing that. The 15 country I received uh, 10 photos is the Madagascar, so uh, I'm glad of that. <laughs> oh. I'm going to speak also some species of agricultural importance. And this is photos I received thanks to this, uh, the effort of citizens. The first one is the Parchia Faggi, or woodland grayling from Italy. And this is a particular species who visit vineyards. So its pollination for vineyards are very fundamental. The second one is Aporia crategi. Uh, this is a species inserted in some uh, conservation projects in Italy. So we, uh, she isn't listed as uh, endangered in a red list, but she is uh, rare, becoming rare. And other butterflies and moths becoming rare are the common swallowtail because uh, due to climate change and the use of pesticides, she, uh, it is in decline, unfortunately. And the Delaphila elpenor, it is pink like wine because also these moths like the graining wood is, um, is visiting our vineyards. And the Euphidia, Euphidia Euclidia glyphica, sorry. Uh, this is a moth which larvae uh, eats 
Several grasses uh, host of the genus of Festuca, for example. Uh, oh yes, the Euplagia quadripuntaria, <clears throat> named also Jersey tiger. This is uh, a moth um, that uh, inserting in the European Habitat Directive for the conservation of habitats and the conservation of rare um, species in Italy, in Europe. So Euplagia quadripuntara is a very rare species here. And I actually, among the 900 photos, I have three, three individuals of this species. So if you find these species, please give us, give us this photo because it's important. And, and the last one, Antocharis cardamini, is one of the 17 butterflies who depends on good agriculture um, as the European study I said before said. Uh, I put also some rare species because I think it's interesting. The first one is the common monarch butterfly. This is this species, Danaus plexippus, is the migrator one because there is another species uh, apart in North African, but there is also the Danaus eripus, who is, uh, who is not migrating, and it's uh, situated in South America. Danaus plexippus is uh, uh, very, very, it's, it's very in danger, in decline. It's not put all in the red list, I think, but um, in the last 20 years, uh, the 90% of the species is this disappeared. So it's important to have also this data. The second one, I'm very happy because this species, Closine nicteis, uh, is a North American, so an Arctic species. And I received this photo from Virginia, but in Connecticut, this species is extinct. So I hope to send this species into to another scientific database because uh, it's very uh, it's very interesting. The third one, Acherontia atropos. Uh, um, I received this photo from Italy, and this is uh, um, a North African species who migrates uh, towards the southern of Italy. And I I know that is rare since several years also become uh, doing natural science at the university. So it's continuing to be rare, unfortunately. And uh, there are also the Apollo species and Zerinzia Cassandra, who are inserting in several conservation projects. So uh, about Apollo, I have only two, two photos of it. And the third one, with my surprise, and I'm happy to say also to the director and to my colleagues, Adshitia statiches is um, a zigena. So it takes part of the Jenny, the family. And this, uh, this moth is inserted in the red list of the Jenny, the in Italy. So I'm happy because among a lot of photos I have, this is the first species red listed. And, ah yes, uh, this is my favorite part because I can show you beautiful and particular butterflies and moths I receive. Uh, the first one is the Diaetria climena, or 88 butterfly because of the draw. You can see there is 88 or 89. And this is from Ecuador, thanks to Johnny Zambrano who takes very beautiful photos. The um, Diaetria climena is uh, has got aposematic colors. Uh, aposematic is a term in etymology that uh, means um, that the predators, when saw this contrast of colors, uh, black, uh, red, uh, white, uh, orange, and yellow also, they uh, think, oh no, this species is toxic, toxic, I cannot eat it. So this species is toxic, not for us, but for birds, spiders, lizards. The second one is Apatura ilia, or Lesser Papal Emperor. This is from Italy. And this is the only photo I have with this moth, because Apatura, the male of Apatura ilia normally is, um, is darker and has got uh, blue iridescence. 
But in this case, it is orange. It is orange not because it's a different species, but because this is a different morph form. So this is it's uh, born like this orange. It's very, very beautiful. And the third one, Consul Fabius. This is, uh, I think, the most beautiful butterflies I ever seen because uh, it has got a silver livery that I think it's also a strategy against predators. This is my opinion because um, it lives in um, pluvial forests and uh, with few rays of the sun, with this uh, silver livery, uh, there were there are some places of light, and so probably these confuse predators. I think this because this is a very weird color in nature, and so I think this is a, a very curious strategy. Others, so the last ones, are the Amadrias Amphinome fumosa. This is a subspecies found in Colombia. It's called the red cracker because the underwings are red, red, vivid red, and the cracker because the male, when he, when he fly, make a particular sound like crack, 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 like this. This because males in, with this sound attract females and uh, um, drive males away, other males for territorial purposes. Uh, Rothschildia zacateca. This is always from Colombia. This is a Saturnid uh, moth, very, very enormous. And this uh, uh, Saturnid, uh, mm, I have several Rothschildia species in my server, but this species uh, I think is rare. Uh, because I saw in uh, some articles that this species is becoming very rare, but I need to study more on it. Another one is a glyce urtische. This is the small tortoise shell. Normally it's common in certain zones of Europe, but in other regions, it's, yes, uh, suffered the great decline of Europe. This is from France, from Jocelyn. And uh, the fourth one, ah, the fourth one ha has got a particular story. And after I finish, um, this is the Emactis sanguinalis, called also the lipstick skipper. Um, I have um, a virtual identification guide from Colombia in particular. This is from Ecuador, but it's okay, it's the same, because uh, this, uh, this species was in the first page of this virtual uh, identification guide, and I think, I hope to receive a photo of this because it's beautiful. It has got aposematic colors, red and black, so it's very toxic for other uh, animals. And I received from Ecuador this species, who is very, very rare. So I hope to send also this photo to other scientific databases. And I am very happy of this because I wanted this photo in my server and uh, to be the first year of this project, it's, it's a conquer, I think. So uh, mm, I think this is a very great project. Um, which aim is to enrich uh, exist, existing, existing uh, scientific databases and uh, studies to counteract, to avoid the absence of data in the world due to ignorance or, for example, due to absence of funds, money, always, and also the absence uh, of the help of governments certain times. So this citizen science is a very useful method because in the recent years, experts uh, consider citizen science projects very useful um, for uh, scientists because scientists can, can do uh, all the work. It's very difficult because money, there is the absence of money. Uh, probably scientists have to um, study in a small uh, zone. So with the photos, with data from citizens around the world, we can have uh, more data. And this is very, very important. So I think citizens are fundamental assistants of us, of scientists and experts. 
And so thanks to them, and I hope also thank to you from now, um, we'll be able also to act, even if it's a small act probably, but it's not a small act for butterflies and moths, no? Uh, to act, to avoid the catastrophe of extinction. And I thank you so very much <laughs> to, um, to listen to me. Thank you. Well, we, we thank you, Clarissa, for your enthusiasm and uh, for the great contribution that you are providing to the project. Uh, um, and, uh, and thank you very much for the, the great presentation. I will just uh, sh uh, share one slide with, uh, again, our contacts. So if you need uh, to contact me or uh, Clarissa, these are the contacts. Of course, as I said, we will send you the the whole presentation and the video and so on. But just in case you want to take a picture, these are the contacts. And uh, with this said, I will also uh, comment about the uh, outcome of the poll. As we can see, the answer, uh, most of the answers were uh, wrong. So that's good. The webinar uh, has been useful uh, so far uh, also to provide uh, better information. So as, as Clarissa mentioned, there are about 20,000 recognized uh, uh, butterflies in the world, but uh, uh, there are uh, many uh, more moths. And in fact, uh, from our website, you can see that the total between moths and butterflies is about 230,000. So that's, uh, that's the information. But unfortunately, as uh, Clarissa mentioned, uh, we know uh, about the status of the populations of only 1% of these species. That's why we need to work together to move in that uh, direction. And this said, I will also start the new poll, which I share also the results with everybody. So the question is, which country has most butterfly species in the world? Brazil, Italy, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, and at the end, I will tell you also which continent has the most butterflies. And, uh, and uh, talking about this, uh, we have our special guest today. We are so happy and proud and honored to have uh, Javier here from uh, the other side of the world, at least as far as Italy is concerned, from uh, uh, Belize, uh, a wonderful country I've never visited, but definitely it's on my priority list in the near future. So uh, thank you, Javier, for waiting for uh, the end of our presentations. I will now pass to you the management of the um, control of the session. Okay, so hello, everyone. Um, so we are at the Ashkin Butterfly Farm today. So on. Uh, We'll be talking about our work that we do here and then our conservation efforts. So um, my name is Javier Saki, I'm 23 years old and I'm the owner of the Ashkin Butterfly Farm here in Belize. Um, so just a little about me, uh, I love nature and to help preserve it um, is one of my top priorities. Okay. So what we do here at the Ashkin Butterfly Farm is um, we specialize in rearing various common and rare exotic butterfly species, both for local exhibit and on a broader scale for commercial purpose, breeding purposes, and for pupae exportation internationally. So here's a brief background of, um, of our farm. So Yashkin Butterfly Farm started back in 2016 and the original purpose of the butterfly farm was for tourism purpose. So you know we invested a lot of time and money in learning how to breed butterflies so that uh, we can have them by the hundreds flying inside the butterfly house you know, for people to enjoy. So in 2019 we officially opened our doors for people to visit our butterfly farm. So, and it is that same year we learned that the butterfly pupae can be exported. Um, so what we did, we did a little research on, on that um, topic right there. And then, you know, in December 
2019, that same year, we did our first shipment of pupae and we also hired our first employee. So now fast forward to 2021, we employ six people and we recently started to export the butterfly pupae to Europe. Well, we started again because um, due to the pandemic, we had to shut down, well, not shut down, but you know, uh, bring down our production here at the farm. So, and sometime in 2018, uh, I was heading to our farm and I noticed that neighboring landowners were destroying forests that they have on their property and they are doing it at a rapid pace as well. So the first thing I noticed is that a few months later when I you know, saw them doing that, um, the butterflies that I used to see that fly around there, they started to disappear from that area. So um, that is when I realized that something needed to be done. Um, I thought, uh, well, I, I knew that they were destroying the, the natural habitat of these butterflies. And well, not just butterflies, but um, other wild, wildlife that we, we, we have um, that side so um and well as they say you know butterflies are indicator of a healthy ecosystem so that's when you know the conservation part of it all started so i would just like to you know state uh, our mission and vision so the, our mission is to breed various butterfly species to supply the growing demand of butterfly pupae for export to international exhibits and to foster conservation and environmental awareness through butterfly farming. So our vision now is to export quality pupae to different butterfly exhibits internationally and to establish butterfly farms for local communities for income generation to improve livelihoods. So those are, and I will explain uh, this in the PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, Yashkin Butterfly Farm Conservation Efforts. So, as I said, the Ashkin Butterfly Farm um, home is Belize. And then, you know, Belize is located on the east coast of Central America, on the Yucatan Pen Peninsula. So, it is bounded to the north by Mexico and to the west by and south by Guatemala. And to the east by the Caribbean Sea. So, that's where Belize is located for, you know, most people, for people that don't know them, where Belize is. Um, Belize has a wide diversity of environments. The most striking feature of Belize are the extent um, over 70% that is still dominated by natural vegetation. And the other one is the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef, which stretches from northern Quintana Roo in Mexico and along the entire length of Belize's coast. Um, it is the longest barrier reef in the Western Hemisphere and the second largest barrier reef in the world. So we're you know, very happy to have that. So as you all know, the reef is an important um, tourist destination here for us in Belize. So, and that is where many people go to see and explore the rich variety of marine life, you know, example, corals and fishes, through a variety of activities. Um, it is also the, um, it, creates employment for so much people here in Belize, you know, for, uh, so it, the opportunities is, um, is there, you know, so that's why, you know, we need to take care of our reef this side. And so, and the reason why we have healthy reef here is because, you know, Belize has over 70% of its natural vegetation. And so the great tropical broadleaf forests that we have here have clean rivers. So, and those are the same rivers that leads to a reef. So the river has clean water and those go to the reef, like I said. So because of the forest that we have, because, you know, you know, we, people here in Belize, they are doing a pretty good job um, preserving the forest. And uh, I believe that um, 
you know more people needs to needs to start to, to to do that and to be aware of it as well and before you know it starts to going the, it starts to go the other way all right so like i said right if the forest is not taken care of there a reef where almost all coral is dead will erode um down over time so and then you know that will have a disastrous impact both on on our marine life and on us as well on that benefit um, from the coral reefs All right so our next slide is um yeah so forests okay so the reason why people clear forests here is um well i see they continue we are starting to do that noise for agriculture agricultural purposes and also for community expansion so um which is um it's not a bad thing but you know there needs to be a balance there needs to be people that are preserving the forest and those that are into agriculture you know who want to to plant stuff so they can sell they need to be very careful of what they're doing for example the picture in this um, slide right there is at one of our farms um, what we're doing there we're trying to protect uh, the forest as much as we can but for some reason you know people still go go out there and they, they did a lot of damage as you see in this picture right here in the slide which is number nine slide um, this is right by the creek side and then you can see that um, they did a lot of damage and then but, um, so what we're doing we're beginning that and then we're, we're starting to plant more trees there so that um, so that it can um, come back to, to life we don't want we want to leave it like this all right so so that's where that's where we we start to play a role uh, in preserving our forest so here at Dashkin butterfly farm like i said we preserve the forest and it's rich biodiversity like i just mentioned earlier our farm is a good example we're doing everything to protect um, the flora and fauna there and then um, we're planting more trees as well so that um, and we're trying to educate our neighbor our neighbors that um, that live nearby so that um, they start to do the same and that uh, they, they destroy less forest and they start you know to preserve it more which will benefit everybody so uh, like i said we're doing that doing butterfly farming and that's one of the ways we, we preserve the forest so butterfly farming creates productive employment and all our staff are trained to breed butterflies without harming the environment so we're trying to tell them you know to do it the proper way and um the best thing to do well the most important thing is just to be aware of the environment so one of the things that we want to start and do here is to train people in communities to start their own butterfly farm and then in return what we do is we, we will buy pupae from them and this will be an income for them to improve their livelihood and this will all be done by protecting our flora and fauna like again which is very important um, here so i believe that's uh, this a sustainable way to, to get income uh, you know what butterfly farming does is that it makes you realize the importance of protecting the the the, the environment and then the because like i said when we, when i started i noticed that um the forests have you know, different species of plants that uh, butterfly use to reproduce for in order for them to reproduce and then the moment they start to clear that forest the butterflies start to go far away and look for another um, uh, set of forests where they could um, start to to reproduce meat and you know live there so that is um, what I noticed and when not just butterflies like I said but if, if they destroy the forest they're also destroying the 
the habitat of all other wildlife that are there. For example, jaguars, tapirs, you know, birds, um, those those um, other wildlife. Okay. So I believe that by you know if we continue if we expand um, butterfly farming to other villages, they will help protect um, the the forest that is around them because they know why they are doing it, and they know why it's important to protect it, and then at the same time they will be getting income um, which you know is very good for everyone uh, so like i said reforestation is just one of our um, projects the example if you see a picture here in this um, slide number 11 one of our projects is planting more trees on our um, property not just for butterflies but for you know, many other species of birds um, that we have on our property including the endangered endangered scarlet macaw so you know, we're planting um, this tree called the pole wood, um, which is cart maca um, feeds on here. So we're trying to you know, plant more for them. And so the other thing is that um, the blue morpho butterfly here in Belize uses a special tree called the platymysium. That's its common name. I mean, sorry, scientific name. And the common name is the... Um, the ant tree here and what happened is that when we travel to the southern part of the country um, we notice that these um, trees here are very common on the roadside and in people's property in people's yard in their farm so that's um that's what we notice there is but what we also notice is that they are just cutting down these trees because um they're just doing it i guess uh, for fun some of them are doing for fun and some of them are just cutting it down so they could use it um for um for firewood that's what they, they use it here for and then um so what we're doing now is that we go into these communities we tell them that um, these trees are very important um, not to cut it down because um, there is a it's very important and what we did we offered to you know, to buy the leaves to, to trim the branches not to cut down the trees just to get some branches from each tree so that um, we can buy it from them and then you know they're getting some sort of um, income there as well so now what they're doing what we started to realize is that they're starting to to save these trees they're not cutting down anymore so if they see a tree they already know they already know that um the importance of it and that you know that we, we will um also buy the the leaves to feed it to the blue morpho caterpillars because that's what the blue morpho caterpillars some um, feed on so that's which is a very good thing you know they're saving a lot of these trees um in southern belize so i believe that's one of the the um the positive impact that we have on, on these communities <laughs> and the other which i believe is more important is education so one of the most important role we play is that we educate the school children so before the pandemic um when children were still in um when the students were still in classrooms what happened is that they used to take school trips down here um, at our farm and then we, we would educate them on the importance of preserving the, the flora and fauna and then um, and why is it important to do that so um and we use that um we educate them through butterfly farming which is a fun way and it's um easier it's better for them to understand and so i believe that um by educating these school children um, at a very you know young age um i believe that um they, when they grow up they will um have this um mentality or they can understand that the, the importance of preserving you know the flora and fauna the forest the coral reefs and so that they can do their part as well Okay, and then um, so that's the end of my presentation. Um, so this is just our plan to expand. Like I said, um, well, I never mentioned in, in the beginning. Um, this is uh, Yashkin Butterfly Farm is still a young farm. We have it's just five years at the moment, and you are still um, we have more work to do. So this is just the beginning of our journey to help save our planet. Okay, and then. Um, so we are working hard to do more and then thinking of innovation.
creative ways ways to achieve our goals so that's um, what we're doing here so and i believe that um um Oh, I forgot to mention that um, our source of income is um, exporting the pupae to, to Europe. So that's where we're sending at the moment. So um, that's how we managed to, to, to uh, have all of these projects running. So this is how we um, sustain ourselves. This is how we pay, pay our employees. And this is, um, and we use the funds as well, the, the, the source of income. Um, we use the income then, sorry, to, to get more trees, to hire people to plant more trees at our farm. And we are using it to, to educate people as well. So that's how we, how we manage to do all of this um, work that we're doing. Okay, so and I believe that if we get more um, pupae buyers or people who buy butterfly pupae, um, uh, we can expand at a rapid pace and even do more to help preserve our forest. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we, we are still looking for at the moment. Uh, we need um, more people who are interested in getting pupae from us here in Belize. And then, you know, when you buy from us, um, there's there's a, a big story behind behind that um, especially in the conservation part okay so um, yeah we have our Facebook page and then it's Yashkin Butterfly Farm um, and then you can check it and we have all our um, our information there our email and then our phone number as well um, I forgot to put it inside the well add it to the PowerPoint all right uh, so that's it thank you everyone for um for giving me the time to speak about my um farm and the work that we do here all right beginning so javier said thank you very much let's see if now we have uh, uh thank you so much uh, let's see if now we have some uh, uh questions and i apologize with everybody for the technical uh issues we had i really apologize unfortunately even though we do our best and do all the tests these things uh, happen so we have a question uh, for uh, from christina zanella um uh, okay so there was a technical problem then uh, i have a question for me how can a company register to obtain the friend of the earth certification uh javier just keep on your whatsapp on uh, and uh, in the meanwhile i will answer the questions um um well, uh, it, it's, uh, it's quite straightforward. First of all, you should contact us so we can provide all the information by email. We have a, a, a preliminary information form online under the apply uh, uh, button on the top menu on our Friend of the Earth website. And there you can uh, provide all the information about your companies at no engagement and uh, confidential, in total confidentiality. And we will provide you with a quotation about the royalties. A price list uh, is available publicly on the website and also the audit costs. And uh, uh, as far as the butterfly safe certification, this is like a, a, a part of the friend of the earth certification. If you want to highlight your engagement uh, to protect uh, habitats important for butterflies. That's anyway part of our friend of the earth certification checklist for sustainable agriculture. And so you will be entitled if you obtain the friend of the earth certification to display the butterfly safe one. Otherwise, you know, contact us for more details and you can go on just for the butterfly safe certification exclusively. Then we have a question for Clarissa. Will you produce scientific information from the information collected and when? Yes. Uh, yes, of course, we collect... We cannot hear you now, Clarissa. Oh, at least that's me. That's my problem. Sorry. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm saying that, yes, um, effectively, photos can become data, scientific data. So, uh, in this case, when I identify a butterfly or a moth, I put them in our system in the website, but 
I have also an Excel file where I put all information I received. So from the name, from the name, the scientific names of the species, from, um, uh, from the country to also uh, the numbers. So I have another Excel file with all the numbers of the species I collect. And uh, at the end, uh, we are going to do our first statistical study on these data, probably at the end of the year. So yes, of course. And we are going also to make some collaborations with databases, scientific databases, associations, organizations, who, um, where there are experts who can take also other, uh, our data. Sorry. Thank you very much, Clarissa. And we will, of course, uh, info alert everybody in this webinar once we get this study out. Uh, there's another question for me. Can a company sponsor the Butterfly Census? Yes, definitely. The companies are welcome uh, and uh, it's a win-win to collaborate on this. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's a kind of project, a citizen science project, which uh, is uh, relatively easily spread through the media. We have had the uh, media's worldwide public publicizing, let's say, promoting and informing about the census. It's very catchy and, uh, and the company sponsoring would definitely get, uh, apart from helping conservation, get uh, really a, a very important uh, image return and visibility. A question for you, Javier, and you can answer on WhatsApp. Uh, by on the phone do to me do other suppliers of butterflies impact the wild populations or are they all farmed bred the majority are farmed but are you aware of anybody who is not farming or uh, who could be impacting uh, we heard also from clarissa that there is an, an issue with uh, black market trade or something like that maybe one of you too can explain, let's say, what is uh, this about or how this can impact. So Javier is telling us that uh, there, are, uh, there are activities even in uh, Belize that uh, catch uh, the butterflies from the wild by means of traps and then uh, um, propose them probably to tourists uh, as uh, entertainment uh, or to show them in, uh, in uh, houses, uh, butterflies' houses, but, uh, but this is not good because they are caught in the wild, they are not farmed. Okay, that we, so if you are a tourist going around the places, please check the origin of the butterflies. And what about Clarissa? Do you have anything to add about the black trade market? Okay. Uh, in Personally, uh, I don't know, but I know that the black market is one of the five or six major threats to the biodiversity in general. So probably butterflies uh, uh, and moths are less exported by black market. Um, instead, probably other species, yes, they suffered more uh, of black markets, but uh, this is a very... Uh, selling, uh, how can I say that? Mm, it's very, si it's silence. It's silence okay. has, has a threat. Okay. So let's all be careful about the origin of the butterflies and that they are bred and not caught in the wild. So um, is biodiversity also a cultural uh, factor of great importance? meaning that richness of a country and a culture, it's not only in museums, monuments, Nobel Prizes, or great entrepreneurs. Well, I will answer to this. Definitely it is. It's like an open air museum <laughs> that we need to respect and learn from. And that's also one of the purposes of our census. I myself, uh, I'm not a bi scientist, uh, but I participated to the census and I sent uh, some of the pictures to Clarissa too. And uh, also in the past, I got involved in this. And it's amazing uh, how much you can learn uh, about the biodiversity of this uh, uh, group of species. It's uh, even just in Italy where 
you know, I, I, I was really surprised to, to see the level of biodiversity and the beauty of these uh, butterflies, which sometimes you just, if you're not involved in these kind of projects, you just see passing by and you don't really care about, you don't really care about, you know, looking a bit more in detail at the colors, at the shape and the behavior also. So it's amazing and uh, it's really one of, it's really the most important museum we have, nature and wilderness. So another question is uh, how can an individual with land get a butterfly safe certification with the view of increasing butterfly population? Yes, please, uh, Arabella, please contact us and uh, we'll be glad to support you in this uh, direction together with Clarissa and uh, Javier with his great uh, experience in the field uh, so that you can, as you are mentioning, devote your land to conservation. So no more questions. I think we went already over the expected time. Again, I apologize for all the delays. I thank you all of you for being here until now. And uh, I thank uh, Clarissa and Javier. I apologize with Javier for the inconveniences, but you have both been great. And I'm really sure that this has been appreciated. Let's keep in touch and uh, let's see each other to the next webinar. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. We need you to protect these beauties of nature. With the global butterfly census created by Friend of the Earth, people around the world are sending us their best butterfly pictures. Thanks to people from Italy, Colombia, Brazil, Switzerland, Argentina, and all over the world, we can promote butterfly conservation by means of citizen science. Our campaign continues and everyone can participate in two simple steps. One. Take the best photo you can of a butterfly. 2. Send the photo with your location to the number that appears in the video and in the description. After that, you can share your most beautiful photos with your friends on Instagram. Don't forget to tag Friend of the Earth underline official in the photo. Be part of the Friend of the Earth Butterfly Global Butterfly Census and become a butterfly conservation hero.